network infrastructure devices. So our network infrastructure devices. Uh, there's two primary devices that we use in our network infrastructure today, routers and switches. Uh, to best understand our switches though, we have to look at where they came from, which is hubs and bridges. So with a hub, it was a layer one device that was used to connect multiple network devices or workstations. They were also known as a multi-port repeater because all they did was repeat the signal they received. So if something came in port one, it repeated out port two, three, and four. If something came out port three, it would go out port one, two, and four. And it would just repeat it to everybody else. All the devices were all in the same collision domain. All of the devices were in the same broadcast domain. And all of the devices shared the same bandwidth. So again, if I have a 100 megabit per second um, hub and there's four devices, each one's going to get about 25 in actual throughput. There were three types of basic hubs that we used. There were passive hubs, which repeated the signal, but they did not amplify it. The reason this is important is if you had a, um, a hub and you had a signal coming in, it does not extend the 100 meter limit because it didn't amplify the signal. To overcome that, they created what's called an active hub which did do the repeating and amplification. So if you had this hub sitting at 90 meters, you then got another 100 meters off of that, you can go 190 meters, right? So again, we can extend that distance by using an active hub. And then later on, they came up with what's called a smart hub, because this was an active hub that also had some features like SNMP for network monitoring, which is simple network management protocol. Even though it says it's a smart hub, they're not that smart, okay? Hubs in general, when you see hubs, think of them as dumb devices. They are dumb repeaters that act as layer one. Whatever comes in is going to go straight back out. The only real difference is, is it going to amplify the signal or not? Most hubs, if you do find one nowadays, they are going to have amplification. But you're going to be hard pressed to find a hub in most networks. Um, hubs are pretty much obsolete today. They have been replaced by switches. And the reason is because a switch combines a hub and a bridge. And a bridge is a layer one device that was used to connect multiple network segments together. So we said before, hubs, everything that touches a hub is in the same collision domain. If that got too big and we had, say, 24 devices, they would all be stepping on each other all the time. So to break those collision domains up, what we would do is we would use an Ethernet bridge. As you can see in the diagram here, the bridge breaks up the domains into two collision domains. So each hub now becomes its own collision domain. If the hubs were plugged into each other, all those machines would be on one collision domain, though. So by having that bridge, it breaks them apart. Each LAN segment now becomes its own separate collision domain. This allows for a larger number of devices on an Ethernet network. Uh, what bridges did was they would actually analyze the source and destination MAC addresses and they, that enter the bridge and populate a MAC table that they would use to figure out where things are going. And based on those MAC addresses, it could determine which side of this bridge things needed to go to. For instance, this bridge would learn that this guy was PC1, for instance, and this guy was PC2, and this guy over here was PC5. And so if one was sending something to two, the bridge would not transmit it out the other side. It would keep it in this one hub. But if it was going to PC5, it would then allow it to go out and go over here, breaking those collision domains in half, which allowed us to get more bandwidth and less collisions. These bridges made intelligent forwarding decisions based on the destination MAC in those frames. So you see that they have two collisions, but they are still only one broadcast, okay? Uh, the only thing that can break up a broadcast is when you get to routers. So these bridges did not break up your broadcast. Instead, they only broke up your collision domains. Again, bridges are fairly obsolete today. You're not going to see them uh, very often. They have been replaced by switches in modern lands because of the increased speed and, and features that they have. In fact, if you look at a switch, essentially what it is, is it is a hub with a bridge on every port. If you did that, you'd have essentially a switch. So what a switch does is it's a layer two device because it's dealing with MAC addresses. It is essentially a multi-port bridge. Every port on a switch is its own collision domain as noted by those blue circles coming off of each port. So in this case, we have four collision domains, but we still only have one broadcast domain because again, we're looking for that router to break up broadcasts. Okay, uh, this switch then learns the MAC addresses and makes forwarding decisions based on those just like the bridge did. Um, it's more effective than a bridge because every port is its own collision domain, whereas on a bridge, as we saw on the last slide, uh, you end up having each hub becoming its own uh, collision domain because there's only two ports on that bridge. So each port represents its own collision domain and the MAC addresses are used to switch traffic between the different computers and all ports here still remain on the same broadcast domain though. 
This is using layer two stuff because switches are layer two devices to send the traffic between the correct workstations. So how does our switch improve our network performance over a hub? We'll show you right here in this example. So right now, if you notice at the bottom, we have two tables uh, for each of these switches. These are the MAC tables, and right now they're empty. As we move on, let's say that PC1 wants to send something to the server. His MAC address is all A's, servers is all B's. So when the switch sees the traffic come in, this ARP request comes in, he says, hey, who has B, 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 B? And the switch then sends that out every port because he didn't know, because it was empty. But he just learned now that PC1 is on port 01, and he fills that into his table. He forwards out the request to everybody else. As the request goes, it hits switch 2, who is also empty. And so he doesn't know who it was, so he sends it out all of his ports as well. And so he finally finds B. B then answers up and says, hey, I'm B, and tells the switch. He says, send that back to A, because I'm B. The switch gets it and goes, oh, hey, I know where A is. A is out port 01. So he sends it out port 01. It gets to switch 1, who says, I know who A is. It's out port 01 again, and he sends it over to A. So now this switch learned where B was, and this switch learned where B was, as well as A. So next time the communication goes from A to B or B to A, what's going to end up happening is we're going to end up sending it to the switch. The switch is going to send it directly to the second switch, because he already knows that's where B is. B is then going to know where it is. It's over there on port 2. And then B can send back and forth. And now we can communicate without bothering PCs 2, 3, 4, or 5. So all of these guys up here and down here are all able to avoid being bothered now because the switch cuts them out of the traffic because they know where it is. If these were hubs, all this traffic would be going to every computer on the network. And so that's why this collision domain being shortened down based on MAC tables is very important. Another kind of switch we have is a multi-layer switch, or a layer 3 switch. And what that does is it is a layer 2 device that can connect multiple network segments together as well and make forwarding decisions based on not just MAC addresses, but also IP addresses and port numbers. So it can act like a router. Uh, this is called a layer 3 switch. It's also uh, called a layer uh, multi-layer switch, which is much more accurate. Um, it can be used to interconnect entire networks like a router, not just the network segments like a switch does. And each port does represent its own collision domain, but in addition to that, each port represents its own broadcast domain. Each port can also be configured to belong to its own broadcast domain using VLANs, um, as well as just using their own collision domains. And it operates at many different layers of the OSA model, specifically layers 2 and 3, and even goes into layer 4 as well. Uh, but that's why a lot of times they'll call it a layer 3 switch, because it does do routing functions. A router is a layer 3 device that is used to connect multiple networks together. It makes its forwarding decisions solely based on IP addressing, uh, or logical addressing, which could be IP or IPX, but in most cases is IP, either version 4 or version 6. The routers are typically much more feature-rich and support a broader range of interfaces than will a multi-layer switch, even though multi-layer switches can do some routing. Each port on a router is its own collision domain and its own broadcast domain. Routers are what break up collision domains, okay? Um, in this case, we have two different switches here. Uh, so you can see all the blue circles are their own collision domains on every port. They also have the two broadcast domains that are being broken apart based on that router in the center. It, again, the big takeaway on this one, it utilizes layer three logical addresses information, such as IP, uh, to route traffic to the correct network. And routers are used to connect two dissimilar networks. Yes, ma'am. Right? On this slide? Uh, on this one, you have eight. Uh, and the reason why is the four ports of the switch, right? Each has their own collision domain, each of these blue circles. The router only has two ports on it. And each one of those is part of a collision domain, but it's sharing that collision domain with that switch. Right? So like this one is a shared one between the two of them. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the broadcast domains are the red circles. Each one is by itself because the, the router breaks them apart. And this is just a summary chart uh, to sum up what we said. Uh, essentially, we have our hubs, our bridges, our switches, our multi-layer switches, and our routers. 
with collision domains, hubs share a, a collision domain. Everything that touches a hub is one collision domain. All the rest of them, one per port. Okay, they're all smarter than that. Um, when you deal with broadcast domains, the only thing that breaks apart a, a, a broadcast domain is a router or something that acts as a router like a multi-layer switch. Everyone else shares their broadcast domain. And where do these things operate? Uh, hubs are layer one devices, bridges and switches are layer two devices, uh, multi-layer switches and routers are layer three and above devices. And that is your network infrastructure devices.